Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE, live in Miami on the floor of IFS Unleashed. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Had some great conversations, have more great conversations coming your way. I have two guests joining me. Please welcome Martin Shermer, the president of Enterprise Service Management, IFS Assist, and Parminder Kosa, the senior IT manager at Paraxel. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Lovely hey, to be thank here. You. It's good Martin, to be here. Martin, talk to me a little <laughs> bit, tell the audience a little bit about uh, Assist, so that, that get that context before we start asking yeah, questions. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, IFS Assist is a recent acquisition. It's an acquisition we made about a year ago, and um, fundamentally it's a, it's a platform that takes care of IT service management, enterprise service management, and IT operations management. So think of it of managing um, sort of the ERP for IT, and then broadening that out into the sort of enterprise, where you're driving enterprise use cases for all lines of businesses like HR, um, fi you know, finance, facilities, so on and so forth. Got it. And then Perminder, give the audience just a little bit of a flavor of Paraxel, who you guys are, what you do, sure. and the so, impact that you make. Yeah, so Paraxel is a clinical research organization. And what that means is that we manage drug trials for big pharmaceutical companies. So we're a big company, we're 25,000 people. We have offices in 150 locations, all the way from Japan in the east through to the west coast of the USA. Big company. Yeah, we are. We are a lot of people. And let's let's start start chatting now, um, Martin, with some of the questions that you have, so we get the understanding of how IFS and Paraxel are working together. Yeah, no, absolutely. I suppose. I mean, the first thing is, and thank you for traveling uh, all pleasure. the way from the UK. <laughs> Appreciate it, and great energy and vibe. So, just what, the first question I had really was, you know, your customer of ours for the last 15 years plus. Maybe just give the audience a bit of context into your journey and how you've evolved from the sort of early years to where you're going into the future? Sure, so, so our history, I was part of a company that Parexcel acquired that was already using Assist. And as Parexcel acquired us, they were in the process of also buying Assist. So it became a kind of natural fit where I carried on with Assist. And we started relatively small, sort of just the service desk stuff. And throughout the ongoing 15 years or so, we've just grown and expanded into kind of being a critical tool for Parexcel right now. Okay, that's fantastic. So just, I mean, part of that journey, I know you started in sort of the more, they call it ticketing space or IT yeah. service management space. Explain a little bit how you've expanded out of that and, and really moved into the enterprise. Sure, so, so yeah, so when we first rolled the SIST out, it was, as I say, purely IT. And eventually we reached out to other business units to say, asking questions like, are you managing your workload through email? Are you managing your workload through Excel spreadsheets? In which case, if you are, we've got a solution for you that will make it a much better experience for your customers. They're all internal. It'll make it much easier for you because you will have official tracking going on through our system. And it'll make it better for your management because we can drive metrics from all of the data that we're getting. So if you imagine finance were getting, I don't know, 200 mails a day because of the size of the, our company, and they were just working through them one by one, responding, and it becomes just a mess. So we develop forms for them to say, okay, raise all, raise all your requests here, we will pick it up, we will manage it, we will communicate with you, and once the piece of work that you've asked for is done, we will let you know, and as we go through that process, we'll make it better for us because, as I say, we're getting those metrics and we'll make it better for you because we can spot where our gaps are. If, we're, if a request is taking three days and of that three days, two days is waiting for someone on our end to respond to you or is waiting for us waiting for a customer to respond, we can iron those out and make it a much better experience for everyone. That's fantastic. It's really music to my ears because we're always pushing the industry to say, you know, move away from just the IT side and really get into the enterprise. And it sounds like you've really gotten a lot of sort of productivity and efficiency gains out of that. Definitely, definitely. And it becomes a kind of a happy circle. So the finance guys will work with the procurement guys and they'll say, look, well, look, we're doing all of our work through Assist now. So procurement suddenly will turn around and say, well, we were, get, we're using this big spreadsheet to manage all of ours, can we do the same? And they'll reach out to us and we'll say, of course we can. We can, what is your process, for example? Uh, they will say, okay, if someone asks for a new laptop, we need to get the approval from their line manager, from uh, the supplier, we need to do our own internal work, and then we will send it out. So imagine if you're doing that in a, an email chain, it just becomes chaos. 
So yeah. we will build all of that out for them. And then procurement will talk to HR and it just becomes a snowball. And before you know it, we are doing uh, about 4,000 tickets per day in our assist system. Wow. And of those, 50% perhaps, maybe more than 50% now, will be non-IT related. Oh, that's fantastic. Really music to my ears and, and it's really breaking down the boundaries or silos within an organization. It's really De good, let the teams work together, right? Definitely, and, and that's one of the key things that we've learned is that we have to engage completely with our business partners. And our business partners are becoming more and more IT literate as well. So, for example, we had a recent uh, big uh, HR solution uh, provided to us. And as part of that, we know there are going to be questions and queries and perhaps even issues to do with our HR system. So we have to work with us guys, the assist front end, uh, the IT HR guys who look after the databases, uh, all of the technology in the background. Then there'll be IT HR who are workday experts and then kind of not necessarily at the bottom of the chain will be the HR people themselves who are in their own way experts in their area experts in IT in a certain way. So all of those people have to work together. We become the front end, but we have to work with all of those parts of the business. That's really great. It's um, basically what you just said, it's taking business, IT processes, and underpinning solutions. Effectively digital transformation, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, so HR is a great example. They used to have paper flying around with leave requests, with sickness requests, with all of those kind of issues. And you said, well, if you have an issue with your HR system, you can't raise a leave request or you can't raise a sickness request, tell us, we will take care of it. We will fix it for you, we'll give you the instructions, and we will get rid of all of that paper. That's brilliant. Just uh, sort of turning the attention and, and all of that, how do you drive the sort of, we'll talk about the autonomous enterprise, how do you drive automation in that process? Yeah, we. Of course, we have to map all of those processes out, get, because we're not the experts in HR or procurement or uh, whatever the business area may be. We have to really dig into their work methods, their working uh, areas, what is necessary for them, what is a, a must have, what is a like to have, what is we don't really need. So we really drive into their processes. Once we've got those, we will automate them. We will build them out in assist with uh, the process designer. It's very intuitive now. The latest version is really good to work with. We will do some pretty clever stuff in there. We'll say, okay, if the manager approval is, the manager is not there, then escalate it to the next person. Then we go to HR and we'll say, okay, if HR have taken two days to do this, we're not particularly uh, okay with that, so we will escalate it to the next person. And all of that, um, process is completely automated, completely in assist. Brilliant, I mean, you know, we obviously we have a codeless workflow engine with a designer and, and if you look at one of the trends from post-COVID is a war on talent and particular developers. The IDC says there's going to be around four million shortage of developers. What is your view on, you know, how easy, do I need developers? Is it easy, is it difficult to do these workflow extensions and automations? Definitely not, no. So the two key uh, areas that you mentioned that, uh, was the, the customizer to develop the forms to make them available to our end users. Drag and drop, really easy to do. Um, you can put some nice filters in there, you can put some nice variables in there, you can drive intelligent, uh, drive the forms from there as well. So if option A is correct, then don't show me option B, show me option C. And all of that um, is codeless, entirely codeless. I don't need to type any code. Um, and when we move on to a process designer, that hooks in nicely with the cu uh, form customizer because we can say, okay, if option B on that form is selected, then run this, this process. And all of that process is entirely codeless as well, drag and drop, create some tasks, create some decisions. Good. Fantastic. Brilliant. Sounds, yeah. sounds really good. Um, switching gears a little bit, you spoke about experience, mm -hmm. and that's also obviously very topical post, well, COVID becoming a remote workforce, mm -hmm. clearly, we need to be digitally connected to our business and organization because the hybrid workforce, as we all know, is here to stay. Um, you know, and that employee experience is fundamental because mm. it, it is their sort of channel to the engagement of the organization. Of course, that has retention impacts and productivity impact. So just from your perspective, how was it, how was COVID from mm. your perspective and, and, and how, 
how easy or difficult was it to get your employees engaged and, and productive and working? Yeah, and, and for us it's, it's a double-edged sword, COVID, well, because of the nature of our business. We, we do COVID stuff, we do drug stuff, so we may have issues with some trials that are related to that, so we need to escalate those. We need to be aware of them and move them to the top of the chain as soon as possible. And then this becomes a source of truth. Everybody knows that if I've got an issue with the current environment that we're living in, I can raise it in assist and everybody knows that's where that information is. There's no need to set up huge conference calls or huge email chains to try and follow those around. So with our assist platform, with our employees as well, everybody knew that this is where the source of truth was. We didn't have any dropouts, we didn't have any um, concerns with our system or performance. We knew it was there, we had to do some work, like, as I say, around COVID issues, just to make sure they get pushed up to the top of the chain. But otherwise, we were fine. It was uh, a great credit to our IT operations team as well, who managed that pretty much seamlessly. That's brilliant, it's good news, yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Um, just, uh, you know, taking it a bit further and talking a little bit about what next, you know, my team has been, I know, talking to your team about the whole area of asset management. Mm. Maybe talk to us a little bit about that journey. Sure, sure. So. We've, we're an ITOM customer as well, so all of our hardware data is stored within the ITOM pl platform. Mm -hmm. So we've pushed out the agents to all of our end user machines, so 25,000 agents, and we're in the process of integrating that into our SIS platform to make that the single source of truth. And as part of that, we're working on the software asset management side as well. So we've got a really good idea of where our software assets are, if it comes to all license auditing, we know exactly how much we've got there. And the more complex side of it is, of course, server um, software management, management as well. So we're in the process of getting all of that data as well. So once we've done all that, there is a, there's always a next step. The next step will be to perhaps do monitoring or pushing out software using the ITOM platform and getting rid of some of the disparate systems that we have right now. Well, that's good news. And, uh, I think I saw a study, I think every single person as an employee carries around 15 or 20 assets with them at any one time, mm. be it from a PC, a phone, uh, physical software licenses, so on and so forth. So, you know, just in that context, yeah. um, I can imagine the, the, the business case around it. Definitely, yeah. And every, again, we map every user to their assets, in inverted commas, their assets. And again, Assist is a source of truth for that. So if you want to look at my record, say, all right, Palm's got a, a laptop, he's got a mobile phone. We're thinking about giving him a tablet, but we'll, we'll find out that he's in the process of getting a tablet as well. So I can have a look at my user record and know exactly what I've got with all of the asset tags and the various uh, links that it has to the software pieces. So it becomes a big tree of my assets. That's wonderful. Just. Um the question I had was, we, we spoke about breaking down silos and um, the enterprise use cases and, and the effect that has. Um, you know, do, do you envisage that Assist can really get to being enterprise wide? And when I say enterprise wide, everybody in the organization effectively using the Assist tool as, as their sort of source of experience um, you know, and level of automation of process? Definitely, definitely. As I say, we're, we're getting we're really pushing to get to that. As I say, 4,000 tickets a day with a user base of 25,000 kind of means that everybody will interact with the system perhaps every two weeks or so. So we're getting to that point and with the new functionality that's coming out with uh, the Assist product, with the Teams integration and the bot and everything that that will bring to us because we are a big, uh, we use Teams, we use bots, we use that kind of technology. It will just fit in seamlessly. And trying to break down the silos as I say, finance, procurement, all of the big beasts within our company already are using uh, the assist tool and we want to bring in more and more of their processes as we mature. Brilliant, I think uh, omni-channel is critical. We want to yeah. connect from any device, from anywhere. It's just the way we work. Mm -hmm. So I think that's critical. Teams is of course a, a tool that most of us have become too familiar with, yep. to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to be here in person finally, right? Yeah. You know, so I think you know, that's all exciting news and, and, and it's really fantastic. Great. Um, you know, so I suppose maybe in the time that we have left, what's next? Um, what's next for us is that we're in the process of migrating our solution to uh, the cloud, to the IFS cloud. Um, 
that will open up a huge uh, new user base for us if we think that all of our customers, all of our um, people who work on studies will have the ability to connect to Assist and ask questions. That's a lot of it is just ask a question or raise an issue or ask for something. Um, so we're talking, it could be expanded by hundreds of thousands of new users. That will mean more people on the back end to manage those requests as well. So yeah, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and as you say, with the CMDB work that we're doing as well, that's another big ongoing stream yeah. for us. It's great because um, as you know, with Assist, um, we have a disruptive licensing model. So yeah. you know, we have a t-shirt size pricing, yeah. all you can eat based on number of employees. So there's no barriers to entry for you. There really is, and, and that really helps us because as I say, initially, particularly when finance came on board and now they're expanding, there is no cost implication for it. The more that we use it, the better it is for us, the more bang for buck that we get. Yep, that's our mantra. Enterprise users write for the price of a cup of coffee <laughs> for the price of a user. <laughs> that's our mantra. I love it. You guys have done such a great job of articulating the synergies in the relationship that IFS Assist has with Paraxel. You talked about the great outcomes that you're achieving, and it's all about, Martin, I know from IFS Assist's perspective, it's all about helping customers achieve those outcomes and those moments of service that are so critical to your customers on the other end, staying with you, doing more business, whether it's an, uh, the, the end user customer, whether it's the actual employee. You talked a lot about the, the customer experience, the employee experience, what you guys are doing together to enable that. And I always think that the employee experience and the customer experience are like this. They're absolutely. inextricably linked. You absolutely. can't, you shouldn't, otherwise you're going to have problems. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, there's actually a study on that saying that, you know, 70% um, of customers generally don't feel they get what they want from organizations. 70. Wow. You know, and, 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 it's, and if you take that one step further, it's what you said, the interconnectivity between customer and employee, employee shops on Amazon, right? Is on those websites. So you, you can't be rolling out and digitally connect to the employee with something that is clunky and, and, and has the wrong experience. It, it, like I said, it really affects that level of engagement the employee has with the company, which happens to be largely these days remote. Yeah, it does. Last question, Martin, is for you. Talk to us about what's next for IFS Assist, obviously we're back in person, there's a lot of momentum at the company. I was talking with Darren, the growth in first half was great, he kind of gave us some teasers about second half, but what's next from your perspective? Yeah, I mean look, so what's next for, next for us is, is, is achieving our goal. We're here to disrupt the industry, you know? It's an industry that's dominated by, by one player and, and a fair amount of legacy players. We've disrupted the business model, as I've told you, you know, and uh, you know, we're here to do more. You know, because it's a simple thing, and, and that's the word simple. We want to keep things simple. We're going to keep engineering and driving our product forward, right? Um, we've made sure that our platform is, is up there with the best. Yeah? We've just been certified uh, by Pink. Um, Pink is a verification of ITIL4, they call it. It's, so it's, an, it's a body, and uh, the top level is you can get 20 out of 20. We, we got 17 out of 20. There's only one other vendor that has more than us, and uh, it's, it's, it's only by a little, and after that it's a big white space. You know, the next one is 14, so, so you know, we're on the right track. We, uh, we are going to, of course, drive and capture the market, so watch this space, we're here to grow. We will watch this space. Congratulations on being that disruptor. Thank you. great work with what you guys are doing. You did a great job of articulating, as I said, the, the customer story here. We appreciate your insights, your time. Thank you very much. Okay. All pleasure. right, my pleasure. Thank you. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Miami on the show floor of IFS Unleashed. We'll be back after a short break.